Today on The Grid, we're talking about photo location swarming. I'm sharing some shots and stories from my Rome workshop. We're talking about the reality of the current state of drone photography, plus our field report on Canon's new wireless. And we've got some cool giveaways, including a think tank, speed convertible, shoulder bag, speed freak 2.0. And it all starts in just 60 seconds. Grid is brought to you by Tamron. Check out their 28 to 75 millimeter f2.8 lens. It's for Sony full frame mirrorless. It's awesome. Go to Tamron-USA.com. And Westcott, check out their new rapid box switch. It has nine light modifiers and 13 quick swap light inserts. Check it out right now at FJWestcott.com. And Profoto, the light shaping company. Check out the Profoto B1X. Power in all the right places. Go to profoto.com slash US. And Platypod, the tripod alternative that is changing the world. Everybody has a Platypod. You should too. Go to platypod.com. Hi. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hello. Well, welcome to another live episode of The Grid. This one is delayed by nine minutes because... Traffic. Traffic, yes. That's it. We'll go with that. We'll go with that. Traffic. Well, it's because you thought you were on a different time zone, right? Yes, I'm six hours ahead, so I, I, I blame... Okay, it was my fault. I'm sorry we're late. <laughs> it is 100% my fault. I have no one to blame but myself. Anyway, we're glad that you hung out this nine minutes staring at a bunch of commercials, but we really do appreciate you being here. My name is Scott Kelby. I'm joined by Eric, the real rocket man, Kuna. Mr. Kuna, hey, how are you? Scott, how's it going? Yeah. Good. You weren't here last week, were you either? No, no, but I was, I was on a vacation. The so. only person working was Christina and Juan, and the, yeah. everyone else was gone. Yeah. Empty. They just sat here and drank beer. Anyway, glad to have you here. We've got an interesting show for you today because we have four different topics. We have four, and we're we're going to yeah, we're rapid gonna, fire topic. We're going to change we're going to change the order of them that we'd originally planned on doing them. So because I, I got here so late, I, I needed to get together a few photos because um, I'm just back from my workshop in Rome. I want to show you just a couple of photos, um, but so we're going to do that as our second mini topic. We mm -hmm. have four mini topics. Our first mini topic is is this thing called photo location swarming. Oh yes, this it's is a, a big thing right it's now. It's a thing. We realized this just just a little while ago when we were out in uh, Utah and Arizona, right? Right. Yeah. So so Eric and I we, we had to fly to Las Vegas for Photoshop World uh, to to look at the convention space. Yeah. We talked about that in an earlier show, and then we went out into the desert. Let me tell you what there there are these places. There was a time, and it's not now. But there was a time where there were these really cool places that only serious photographers knew about. Mm -hmm. And and I'm, we're going to give an example of where we just were. For example, the, the Canyon Slots. Yeah, Page, like, Arizona. I had to find out about it from another pro <laughs> photographer years ago. I'd never heard of them. I'd seen a slot photo before. And I'm like, ooh, I wonder where that is. And so when we went there... Now, this is my, my first time maybe 12 years ago. Antelope Cannon, upper and lower slot. I went to the lower slot, the yeah. one where you climb down the ladder, right? Yeah. And, and there was probably 10 or 12 people in the slot. Now, we were in there for well over an hour. There was nobody there. So we went back a week ago, two weeks ago, whenever it was. Two weeks, yeah. two weeks ago. Was it two weeks ago? Yeah. It was two weeks ago. And there were, there were 200 people in the parking lot waiting to go in. It was, and somebody told me, I ran another into another 200 down in it. I ran into somebody this week who was talking about the slots and they said, it's pure chaos in there. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and it is these places that used to be like so unique and so different now. So we've ruined the slots though. We did, we got lucky. We did. Well, we, we had to, because we knew that this was coming, right? You know, so, you know, there's a lot of this happening. So. Uh, the one thing about the slots and and a lot of those locations, like well, with that location, you've got to you got to have a guide with you. You got to have a Navajo guide. Yeah, with yeah, because these are on Indian yes. land. You have to have a guide to get in. But we were able to find uh, through research one that had just opened up. Yeah, within the last and year. With right. the within the last year, and we were able to go to that slots. Now it wasn't. There's a reason that Antelope Canyon slots is is probably uh, maybe a little better. Uh, but it wouldn't be better if you're a photographer because there's 75 other people in your shot. 
Yeah, so how do you get a clean shot of anything? Because even even with just 10 of us in our yeah. slot. So now I will say That's this. That's 12 people. Here's what the photo <laughs> swarming problem is, and this will give you the context, okay? In the Antelope Canyon slots out in, in, in Arizona, you have like the lower slot, but then you may have 10 tour operators booking people to go in there. So at any one time, there could be 200 people in slots designed for 20 people. Right. So they're packed, packed full. I mean, I mean, there, there are mob scenes because there's multiple tour operators. And by the way, we went and looked. They're all sold out all the time. They're just sold out, even, sold even out, sold out. Even the thing out. is, uh, back in the day, they still, and they still have this now, they have special photography tours. Yep. The problem is there's 20 other photography tours going on at the same time. At the it's same ridiculous. time, yeah. And what also <laughs> you'll find is it's not just photographers like what we think of a serious photographer. Yeah. Now what you have is half the people there or more are just shooting with their phone. Oh, yeah. And they're just click, click, and they're holding up their iPads in front of you while you're trying to shoot. And, and I remember going there years ago, and I can even tell you what year it was, but I'm going to say it was around 2007 or something like that. And th there were already 35 photographers in a line in, like, yeah. shooting this one spot. And then all of a sudden, here comes this tourist just around the corner walking into your long exposure. Like you've done a two-and-a-half-minute exposure, and someone goes walking in. Marge, yeah. what's that up there in the ceiling? You know, and then all of a sudden, all the photographers, ah, oh, you screwed up our exposure. Mm -hmm. But but this is happening everywhere. Well, it was happening even earlier when we were in, in uh, Zion, where, you know, we get there, and there's just a line of people in the yep. spot, right? Yep. Everybody's like, well, that's the spot. So there's a line of people in the spot. And, and I, 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 I blame Google. I blame 500px, I blame Pinterest, I blame all the places I tell you to go and do research. Look at Iceland. Remember when oh, Iceland, Iceland was unique and, and like nobody went there and then all of a sudden, everyone is in, you it can't find somebody that hasn't been to Iceland. <laughs> it has to be the most social place it's, on Instagram. It, and it's beautiful and it's awesome, <laughs> it's but awesome. you're fighting with- It is awesome just hundreds of photographers and thousands of tourists mm -hmm. and it's just so i'm going to make my prediction of the next place to be overrun with photo photography location swarming where is that the faroe islands of denmark they're in denmark right faroe islands? um i think so i mean it's below iceland it's not sweden it's, it's not between, norway it's not finland it's between um, iceland it's and ireland kind yeah. of that area uh, yeah i think it's denmark I'm, I, I'm, I pretty, think sure. It, I'm yeah. pretty sure it is Denmark. Now, but when I say it out loud, it sounds a little weird. Let's see. The Faroe, <laughs> I'm on, uh, you know, what you call it, Google. Faroe Islands. But it looks a lot like Iceland. Uh, they're north, northwest of is, Scotland. Right oh, wait, you somebody's got it up there. That's, that's not mine, but uh, oh. I just want to find out what country. I think they're in... Uh, yeah, they're they're in Denmark. It's a it's yeah. A, yeah. They're part of Denmark. They're off the coast of Denmark, and that is the new one where everyone's going next. So get a shot. I'm not showing anything. I was just looking again. <laughs> Juan's is telling me to hook up. I'm like, all I got is Wikipedia. I don't know how. <laughs> I think what Jason's showing is more interesting than what we're showing here. Yep. Anyway, oh my gosh, that is going to be the next place that is completely and totally overrun. Mm -hmm. So. This, and, and there's nothing we can do uh, about no. it. It's when the world finds out this is a cool place, just everybody just rushes there. And you know what else is going to get ruined is um, Lisbon is another place mm -hmm. where it's starting to explode because Lisbon is full of all kinds of treasures. It's another place that will be just, you know, packed full. And, you know, uh, Chiki Nando, who's mm -hmm. the international yeah. ambassador. I, I think he should be called the Kelby One ambassador for Lisbon. Yep. If you go to Lisbon, you're hooking up with Chiki Nando. He showed me a picture uh, of him with another member from the community, like, and my favorite restaurant too. Time, yep. out. Time Out Lisbon is my favorite restaurant in Lisbon. And he shows a picture like, hey, look, it's another Kelby One member hanging out with me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, dude, I hate you. Oh, look. Oh, there's Chiki. He's in the comments. Yeah. Chiki Nando says, guys, there are many gorgeous places in Portugal where there are no photographers or even visitors. You know what those are called? Uh, bottomless pits. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. No, but that's a, you do have to nowadays really venture out because those, those uh, picture postcard places are becoming overrun. Yeah, they are. Because of the, like you said, Google... Facebook, Instagram, people are seeing 
oh, I want to go to that place. Right. And then you find a lot of people in those places nowadays, especially with iPhones and iPads, and it, it's very hard to contend. It's Instagram. Um, Stinking Instagram. No, Instagram, yes. I love Instagram, though. I love Instagram, too, but... But it is kind of like getting in there, yeah. Yeah, and you know what else, too? Uh, the Now, it was... It was and then you got the Instagram I want to say Lofoten Islands... <laughs> But I w- there was a guy from Norway, from for Bergen, Norway, who was on my workshop last week. And he was mm-hmm. like, it's not Lofoten, it's Luf, Lufoten. Mm-hmm. I'm like, there you go. Dude, I'm not saying that. Anyway, um, but that's another one that's, that's getting overrun, that, yep. that all of a sudden, you know, all the photographers are heading there. And I get it. Do you know, they, they, they have what's called the most Instagrammed place in Norway, which is... The Lafouten Islands. It's yep, this yep. one little village that there's a bridge where everybody stops there. You know how I knew about it? I saw it on Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. And I looked it up on Instagram. Is this the right bridge? Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Do I have the right photo? Yeah, that's the place. So it, it's just a weird time for photography because, uh, you know, the guy that won our gallery show, right? Rammy. Rammy. Yeah. One of the reasons I think that Rammy's work stands out so much is you don't keep seeing. He's showing you locations. Now, some of his locations are hard to get to. He yes, hikes some, and hikes. But most not all of them, of them are. Yeah, but not. but he he has some unusual locations, and people are like, "Wow, where's that?" Seriously, when was the last time you said, "Wow, where's that?" Here's how it is now. You go, "Oh, Iceland." Oh, Iceland. Oh, that's the Faroe Islands. Oh, oh that's, that's Norway. Norway. <laughs> it's like everybody it, like. That used to be such a special thing. Like, there was these special places that you could go, you know? Mm -hmm. And now it's like, and everybody's shooting from the same high viewpoints in different places. And it's just, it's it's just getting harder and harder and more challenging to stand out in landscape or travel photography. Yeah, especially landscape, yeah. Yeah, where's left for landscape? Now, interesting thing. You gotta get out there. When you go to these landscape locations, like out west... Mm-hmm. Everybody we saw there was either Chinese, European, or, or German, or German, yeah. pretty much. Because you would get in the elevator and you'd hear everybody talking and stuff. Bus loads of Chinese people showing up. Mm-hmm. Now, um, the, the Chinese people. I, how would you describe their photo etiquette? Um. Uh, how can I be kind? Yeah, I know it's a tough. Um, uh, it's a tough one. Um. Different than ours. Um, yeah. <laughs> Lacking? Uh, I, I, that's just what we experience. This is just I'm what not, we experience. I'm not, I'm not uh, don't want to label anybody. No, no, know. no. It's but just the people we experienced. Experience. The ones that we experienced were not, were, they were completely oblivious it, it to any like other photographer being there. If you were doing something, there. they did not care. They were going to get right in front of you. They would set you. up right in front of you. you yeah. Excuse me. Okay. All right. I, I was uh, shooting at the Coliseum the other day, and a woman was there with her husband. He was shooting a medium format, and she slammed into me. <laughs> I mean, like slammed. I don't mean like this. I mean, she slammed into me. Yeah. Where I'm like, and I said, "Oh, sorry." She just kept doing her thing. She slammed into me again later. Just like, I guess it's so crowded in China that bumping into people is just like, ah, that's just what we do. That hey, Jim's got a Jim. Jim Colorado. <laughs> It's an interesting last name. Jim Colorado yeah. says that's why fishermen never tell their favorite spots. Yeah, it is true. It is true. I mean, that's I was actually out shooting with Remy, and uh, one of the places we came up to, we both said, "All right, nobody tell the GPS coordinates of this location." But that's your job. That's <laughs> our job is to show those those places. That's our job. No, What's but my you job? know what's gonna happen. I know that place will be shot to death. But look at a lot of Remy shots. You don't go, "Oh, that's," you know. Well, actually, Instead, some of them you can. Well, pick some of them out. you can, but I mean, not. I I wouldn't know where those shots no, are. I would. I mean, most of those shots. Well, because most of those shots, you are hiking to get to it. Yeah. 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 But like, I don't yeah. know where any of the. I don't recognize any of those shots. Hmm. So. Yeah. Now Susan from Alberta, Canada, might. Yeah, Alberta, Canada. She might. Yes. All right. Hey, we have definitely. some shout outs real yeah, quick because we're gonna have to go to a break uh, here in a minute. Got Buddy Brown saying hello. Cheeky Nando. Deb, Cheeky Nando. Johan. Piotr, Piotr. They're all here. We got Piotr. Daniel saying hello. And we've got uh, Mumbai. I'm not going to, I don't know. Can you get that one? Bavesh. Bavesh. Bavesh from Mumbai over here. Then we got Kathy saying hey all. Hey, Kathy. Did you get Mariana? Oh, Mariana. I did not see that up there. 
Well, hello, everybody. Well, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Um, we're going to take a short break because we're supposed to. But when we come back, I'm going to put together a few photos. I don't have I don't have nearly them yeah, all so done. Gonna, you, you just came back from Rome. Just came back from Rome, and I want to tell you a few interesting things about with it. With Mimo, right? With a Mimo. Mimo. I was a, with a Mimo. Did you guys do long exposures at all? Of course we did long exposures. <laughs> Dude, it's Mimo. I know. He's got that new class on Kelby One. That it's people it's are, the uh, Mimo. Yeah, because yeah. he's awesome like that. Yeah. All right, let me see if I can get these together here. All right, so we'll take a break, and then we come back. It's a back, break. It's we're called a break. We're looking at uh, the Rome workshop. The you Rome. Guys... I got some pictures from a Rome. Mm. Be talking like that for a week. When you need a tripod that is compact, that is portable enough to take with you anywhere, one that is adaptable to any situation, that will prove versatile enough for any shoot, and is compatible with your other gear, giving you freedom to create your own perspective. Look no further, Platypod Ultra does it all. Visit platypod.com for more info. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by b &H Photo, the professional source since 1973. Hey, everybody, we are back. And we're going to look at stuff up from Rome, huh? <laughs> From Rome. Oh, my gosh. So the first thing I had to do, so I, I had my workshop was in Rome. It was, it was, we had 12 photographers, so it was right. sold out. It was great great group of people really really a lot of fun mm -hmm. just i we're very blessed when you when you get a great group of people that everybody yep. gels together everybody hangs together everybody looks out for each other everyone's having meals together it, it's just it's just a blast and we we did have a wonderful group but unfortunately i i on day one i had to create italian names for everyone oh yeah so mark became marco right so everybody mm -hmm. had a and Teresa was teresa and then i talk like this i didn't talk like that the whole time just enough to be annoying. Anyway, hey, look, oh, look. Mimo it's says a Mimo. Hello. Mimo says hello. Hey, Mimo. So uh, Mimo was my my co-teacher, and so uh, we we uh, we had a lot of fun. We got up every morning early. Mm -hmm. I mean, like crack of dawn. Like, all right, we're meeting in the lobby at 5:45 a.m. But we let them sleep in one day and got up at six. So uh, we go out and shoot, but we would shoot multiple things. Like we'd go shoot, and then we'd go to a, walk to the next location. We'd take vans to go to one location, mm -hmm. and then uh, we would, you know, do multiple stuff there. Uh, hey, before we get too much into this, I want to mention we have some great giveaways today. We're going to be giving away a Think Tank. I'm going to read it: Speed Convertible, sh uh, Speed Freak 2.0 Shoulder Bag, courtesy of our friends at Think Tank Photo. Where is it? Right here. Giving away this bad boy to somebody watching today oh yeah 
And then we got one of these uh, platypods. Oh, I got my platypod stories. And you used uh, that all through Rome, right? Yep. Dude, let me tell you. I'm, I'm going to show you a shot if I can find it here. Hang on one second. Yeah, here it is. All right, I got two shots it's to like show a you. magical weapon. It is. Let me tell you something. The rest of the world has not caught on to the fact that this is. There it is. It, it's a tripod-ish thing. So can you? Just I don't know. If, past it. I can't tell if you can see it or not. I'm sure they can. Oh, there it is. Well, this, our screen is yes, blinking on and it's off. Like, uh, gotcha. All right. So, and someone asked me, I put this on Twitter, and somebody said, is that thing going to fall over? It was, it wouldn't, there was no chance of it falling it's over. Rock it, solid. it was rock solid. So, that little and tiny. Look at that. You got an articulating screen. Thank you. I do have an articulating screen, and we'll talk more about my, or my articulation later. But uh, I think I have another shot here. So, there this is. is in the place that I always dreamed of having a tripod, but is forbidden on a level you can't believe. This is inside St. Peter's Basilica. So mm -hmm. St. Peter's Basilica is basically at the Vatican. It's the Church of the Vatican, and it is the most unbelievable. The lar I think it's the largest church in the world, right? Mm -hmm. Physi physically the largest church in the world. Unbelievable inside, and everybody in there is shooting it like... look at the shots you have. Right? I was able to... And, I, and you know what else, too? They had little barriers to keep you from going places, and the barriers were the perfect width of a platypod altar. In fact, that's what I think what I'm on back. Yeah. Oh, no, no, that's not the barrier. That's an actually like a door. But there are little barriers, and I'll sh you might be able to see one in a minute, but they were perfectly wide enough for the mm -hmm. entire platypod, and I could shoot all over the place. So give me one second. Don't, don't look until I get it ready, but let me show you, for example, Onio, uh, of what you can get. Now, there are two tricks to this. One is have a platypod. Everybody but three people, there were 12 photographers, nine of them had platypods. Oh, yeah. So, every, and of course, Mimo had platypod, I had platypod, everybody has platypod. Um, but uh, let's see. If you're doing travel or landscape photography, it's like a must. Yeah, I actually gave up yeah. my, my platypod to somebody. I was yeah. like, keep this. You need this. <laughs> you need this. <laughs> you need this more than there I do. No. But anyway, uh, let me just show you real quick. Oh, I'll keep looking in the wrong place where I can't find it. I want to show you a photo you don't see every day from, uh, oh, it's going to launch Photoshop. Okay, do not, not yet. Hang on. Hang on. Let's just do it the old-fashioned way. No, it doesn't look as good. Hang on. Don't move. Don't breathe. Don't make a sound. While we're waiting. Uh, what ball head were you using, Scott? That was a... Um, well, I was using a really, a, right a really right stuff BH40. Yeah. Perhaps the greatest ball head ever made. And do you have an opinion? Uh, Brian's asking on the Tamron 28 to 300 for travel photography. I do. Uh, I've recommended that, that 28 to yes. 300. Uh, two people on my workshop had that lens, and actually I kept borrowing one. Because let me tell you what, that 300, I had a 70 to 200 with me. And sometimes 200 not is much, not, enough. not enough. And I'm going to show you, I'll show you an example if I can, but let me get this. I want to show you a couple of pictures. G give me one sec. I got to get it queued up here. It's this one and this one. You're not going to see these shots very often. And the reason is it's so packed full of people all the time. So this, look at this. This is the main altar in the center of it with no one there. Now, one of the reasons why was we got up early. So mm -hmm. we were within the first 100, 150 people in the door. Well, that is something to our first topic where we're talking about swarms, the photo swarms. That is a big secret with that is if you want to avoid that early, early, early. Well, this is one of the, the topics that I wanted to look at this one. Ah, hold on. I didn't you know. I'm not in the light room. I have to but go. People just don't like not getting that up early. One. This one. Look at this. For some reason. Nobody there. Yeah. Ser Non-serious photographers sleep in. <laughs> yep, they do. <laughs> and I've got it wide open. That's a platypod sitting on top of one of those barriers. There you go. Now. Look how it brings that foreground element so I, I couldn't reach over the barrier and set it. I mean, there's a barrier there to keep you out. If you want to get in trouble, break the rules. Uh, and so I didn't want to do that. I wanted to mm -hmm. kind of, you know. But that is sitting on top of one of those barriers. And uh, actually, if you, I'm going to take my mouse and show you these little things. They're little barriers to keep you from walking into areas they don't want you to walk on. Right. But they really should be called put your platypod here. <laughs> platypod tri uh, holders. <laughs> I'm telling you. And so this is, this is, oh, gosh, I did it again. Here's another one. 
So this shot here is platypod on one of those little things aiming straight up. Now, I had the articulating uh, screen. screen. And so I was able to aim this thing up at the roof and see perfectly and compose perfectly mm. with the ball head and the platypod. Magical. So let me tell you what, the last time I was there, I, I wanted a tripod so badly, but there were literally thousands. And I'm not, you know that, that the St. Peter's Basilica is one of the most uh, crowded or, and popular tourist attractions in the world. Yeah. And it's already the biggest cathedral in the world. So you can imagine how many people are in there, but it was it, first thing in the morning, we were within the first hundred people in, and you could walk in and get empty areas because people would go right up to the, you know, yeah. there were some people were there for communion and doing different things. They were, you know, had like organized little groups and stuff. But we had about, well, from seven to eight, 15, we had the place to ourselves. They opened the doors at seven. Wow. We were probably in by 7.05. They make you go through uh, security. You're not allowed to bring large bags in. You're not allowed to wear shorts. You have to dress, you know, appropriately. And so I wore a long skirt and uh, <laughs> legs were covered. No one's listening. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. All right. But, but that was, to me, to be able to go in there and just mm -hmm. get sharp, sharp. I, this, I, this, sharp, this shot was so sharp, I couldn't sharpen it. I was afraid right. if I sharpened it, it would just get too sharp. That's awesome. That, that really, really happens. So, uh, and we'll talk more about the gear and stuff. Somebody asked well, the actually, question. Well, actually, somebody's asking you about the gear of what bag do you carry all your gear in? All right. So, I use a Think Tank bag. I use a Think Tank Roll. It's the only it's roller the they make. airport roller thing. Airport yeah. roller. It's the airport only one with four roller, wheels. Blah blah. Listen something. to me. Get the four wheel one. Do not buy a camera bag with two wheels because, and, and I'm not making this up when I tell you this. With the four wheel roller, you can take a finger, and just roll it. You can take a pinky and roll it through the airport. I, I'm not kidding, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. You can you can push it with your pinky and let go, and it will continue to roll without oh, yeah. you. With a two-wheel bag, you are lugging dragging it through the it. airport. You are dragging it, and it feels heavy and stuff. It has no weight whatsoever. Now, it, I on the laptop bag I have, which is also from Think Tank, obviously a fan of Think Tank stuff, um, I slide it over the, the bar. And so my, my camera bag and my laptop bag, I can take my pinky and whoosh, it is It fits in international overhead uh, no problem. Yeah. Even long ways. Long ways it right. fits in. And in that bag, I, I took more gear than I normally would take. I took my two main lenses, but since I took that Canon EOS mirrorless, I wanted to take one of the lenses just for it, so I took the 24 to 105. Mm -hmm. And then I took a ball head, and I took a tripod, and I took a platypod, and I took a, you know, I, I went, but I didn't carry any of that. So if you ever listen to my classes when I talk about travel photography, I may take a lot of gear, but it never mm -hmm. leaves my room. I wore that think tank um, yeah. sling bag. So you load up with what you're going to use just that Just what I'm going to take that day. So basically it was yeah. a, so here's what was in my bag. A platypod, a wide lens, a long lens, and a ND filter. Okay. That was it. There it is. That's it. The think tank airport roller derby rolling carry on camera bag. Yeah, look at all the stuff at a hole. Look, that's got a... A, a, a DSLR body with a 7200, a DSLR body with a 24 to 70. They got three flash. more lenses in there. They got a flash. They got accessories. Mm -hmm. They got all kinds of crap in there. And you've got the outside sleeves that hold stuff and the inside sleeves. And it's just, it's a great, well, you great, know, great uh, bag. Ickle Dot has a good comment. They say, uh, tell them to watch your travel course. Oh yeah! yeah Thank if you're really you, uh, if you're really interested in it, that's true. Your travel course on Kelby One. Yeah, I just did yeah. a class called How to Travel uh, How to Travel Light and How to Travel mm -hmm. Right. How to tell How to Travel Right. That was the thing. Yeah, how to travel right. So because I go through that. Because you sometimes can travel light. You sometimes can travel heavy. It's just traveling right. Yeah, and what we, and and what you're there for. Johan asked, "How was the weather in Rome?" It was honestly, we had beautiful. It didn't rain or anything. It rained right before we got there, and then it was beautiful for the whole workshop. But it was a little hot. Yeah. Now, uh, the last two days were really nice, but there was a couple of days where it was baking. I mean, it was like yeah, it I was, was like looking Florida at the uh, heat. weather and where you're going uh, next to uh, Austrian, and and it's going to be a little cold. 
it's gonna, I, I'm colder. ready. For, I'm ready for cold. Colder. Let me tell you, I'm yeah. ready for cold because it was first couple of days were hot. But uh, speaking of cold, uh, Rubino has a question or has a comment. Rubino, Rubino. when has a comment. Scott, I see you ha in. You're in Livonia next month for your new class. I, I think am. she means your new seminar, which is that Photoshop for wedding uh, and portrait photographers. Yeah, if you photograph people, I'm launching a new tour. It starts in, uh, well, just outside of Detroit in Livonia. Yep. And uh, I'll be there in, like, next month, October. I actually have the date here for you. I can tell you yeah, the date. And if you go to kelby1live.com, yeah. you can see all the dates coming up. My first three cities for this is Photoshop for wedding and portrait photographers, is Livonia, Michigan on the 22nd, Philadelphia on the 23rd, and Minneapolis on the 29th. You know what's in Minneapolis? Mm -hmm. The Lightroom development team. Yep. They're in Minneapolis. Yep. In Mini. M-I-N-N. -N. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, we're well, looking forward to seeing you there, Rubino. Yep. Rubino when? Uh, so, a couple more things. I'm, I'm going to show you a couple more shots from the uh, trip of Rooney. Mm -hmm. And uh, But the platypod... Here's the great thing. I used it everywhere. No one in the entire week of shooting nonstop ever said, you can't do that. Right. Now. Every time I've shot with it, too, that's the same thing. Never, never had a single. We I've had people had, do that. I've had security guards do this, where they're kind of looking at it. They trying, look at it and go. They're trying to determine if I should say anything. And they go. And then they go, eh, eh. whatever. Because if somebody said something, I would just take it off and go, is it okay if I leave my camera here on the floor? Yes. So I can't go this much higher? Okay. <laughs> what are they going to say? This no, much they've, always, a deal they've always done that. They've looked at it, and they're, you kind of see they're trying to see if they should say something, and then they just kind of, eh, whatever. Yeah, because it's, it's no different than really as far as the amount of room it takes. No one's going to trip over it. You're standing right in front of it, so it's like... Anyway, people of here's an interesting thing. This is what I want to tell you. So the, the big tip out of this of this thing that I hope that you get is number one, platypods are awesome, and someone will win one today. You can win either this one or the big one, right? The big it's big brother. Mm -hmm. But I hope the tip that, that you take from this is if you want an empty scene, get up early. Oh yes. We, we went outside the Vatican, the whole St. Peter's Square and all this big beautiful area. No one there but us. Mm -hmm. No one. We went to the Coliseum. No other photographers but us. At 6.15, 6.20 in the morning, not a single other photographer. We went back to the, we went back to the Coliseum twice because one time we had no clouds. So mm -hmm. the class voted to go back to get the clouds. And that was the only one other photographer, the Chinese photographer and his bumpy wife. Mm -hmm. There you go. Um, but outside of them, it was just us. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, I, Everywhere we went, we went to um, everywhere you could think that would be crowded, uh, except for we went to the Pantheon. Nobody there, not a soul. Finally, one other guy showed up, but he was, was weird. He was taking pictures of flowers. But but we're there by ourselves. We leave there and we go to the uh, uh, tip, uh, Tivoli. Yeah, the tip. That's not Tivoli. What's it called? Is it Tivoli Fountain? I don't know. Trevi Fountain. Trevi Fountain. The Trevi Fountain. There was 200 people there. I don't care what time you go. We got a tip to go at like 7 in the morning. We went there, but we were all able to line up our tripods. Yeah, I saw that on, the, on social. Yeah. yeah. Oh, if you, if you want to see a little bit of behind the scenes, go to my Facebook page. Well, you're, and if you're on it, just scroll back down. Yeah, if you're yeah. watching my Facebook page, just scroll down. And we did a couple of live behind the scenes stuff from out there. But so do you have a couple other pictures from there? Yes, I do. Thank you for mentioning that. Uh, I'm not completely done with them. But mm -hmm. I'll tell you one place that we went that was kind of cool. We'll show you this. We went to this building, and you just walk in. It's just open. Mm -hmm. There's no charge. And it's got a, a great shot straight up. Oh, wow, yeah. So take a look here. That's cool. And to give you a better view of what it looks like, it's like, it's like that. Very so that's cool. right above where, the, you know, you would see the street if I ducked down anymore. But we're just, you just walk in the door. This is 30 seconds from the Trevi Fountain. Oh, cool. Literally right down the street. Yeah, I like that. Isn't that cool? That's it's just, really cool. Just go in. The, the only trick about this was getting your camera lined up so everything was straight. You yep. have to take a shot or move. And now yeah, I move. had that little articulating mm -hmm. screen. Like, oh, oh, move. What? Okay. So then there's that. Um, Sam asked, what do you think about mirrorless? Will it slowly get rid of DSLRs? Well, Sam, we'll talk about that in just a moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one I took. Let me open it up and 
Oh, wait, don't. Hold on. Don't show it yet. Wait, wait, wait. What's going on here? Let me see if I can find... Uh... Hey, there's the fountain. Yeah, here's, mm -hmm. the, here's the fountain. Here's the fountain right here with a long exposure. But if I were... Actually, it looks like it's a little bright. If I... Um, and I did the whole white sky for my white for my white series where I do a, I call it the world on white seamless. Mm -hmm. So I left it, left the sky white, but this is a long exposure. You can see the nice, but if you go down an inch, you, you will see, see people. Yes. You will see a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And even though this is first thing in the morning, you will see just a bunch of people. Hey, we got to take a short break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about the current state of drone use. Cause we have some interesting thoughts on that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, We'll be right back. And then we'll win some stuff later. And yeah. we'll drink some water from our great Talk cups. about uh, mirrorless. Mirrorless, yeah. We'll talk yeah. about that. Flash, I bet you've got one. I bet you don't love it. You're not alone. Most people don't love their flash, which is why I wrote the flash book. This book is a sensation. For the last two years, it's the number one selling flash book on Amazon. Five-star rated. Take that book and pair it with a Kelby One membership with all sorts of classes on how to fall hopelessly in love with your flash. You get the membership, you get the book, and it's all for one low price. That's the deal. Come and check it out exclusively at Kelby One. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. Make sure you don't miss any episodes of The Grid by subscribing to Apple's podcast app or iTunes. It's free, and we even have a special audio-only version, too. So sign up today. Hey, we're back. Scott Kelby here with Mr. Kuna. Yep. How's it going? It's going okay. Yeah, what do you got? So you got some more pictures to show us real quick? I was going to show you just a couple more real quick. Will asked what lens was it for that shot. Uh, that was a, I, most of what I shot, really, I hardly ever took out mm -hmm. my long lens. Uh, and I borrowed that 28 to 300 when necessary. Was a 16 to 35. Mm -hmm. uh, I will show you one taken with that 300 uh, Tamron right here. This is one taken with the 300 Tamron. We're in the, what's called the Forum, and it's all these old, you know, uh, ancient ruins and this was i this was and i saw this yep. down here there's no way to get it under 200. looks and just like the caesar's palace at yeah and I'll show you, here's so here's where you're shooting into this is what you're shooting into that's the forum and mm -hmm. this that stuff is over that way there you go and i didn't shoot it when it was the sun was just coming up like this it was a little later we stayed for a few more minutes but i was going to show you a couple of other shots that might be uh in. this one is a long exposure there were about, I don't know, 200 people on that bridge. 
but I, I, let, I put a 10 stop neutral density filter on it and let the people keep walking for like t seven, I think it was six, seven minutes. Right. And when you're done- They just disappear. They just disappear. I love that. As long as they keep moving, if they stop and stand there, they will be in your shot. Mm -hmm. But as long as people, well, people, it was kind of sprinkling and raining. So this is shot from the Castile de Ugly Fort. It's that big round ugly fort that looks like a water tower. Mm. In outside of the tower, ugly as blazes. Inside the tower, beautiful. And from that same window, I shot. Uh, where is it? Uh, from that window, where's the shot? Uh, I lost it. Uh, I just showed it to you. Oh, here. This a shot. Uh. So, if you face straight, you're facing that bridge mm -hmm. if you look to your left that's the view of the different uh i think uh, all the different domes so you know what i like about this shot and what i'm trying to do in all these shots is is so the name of the workshop was the classic beauty of rome i don't want to show anything modern in the shot i mm -hmm. want to compose the shot so you don't see tourists and so you don't see anything that gives away when it was taken right now that will have me in some cases going in with the clone stamp tool and removing like a satellite dish or a television antenna. But outside of that, the rest has to be done in composition. And so when I show these shots, I'm trying to show, you know, like you can't really see what the people are wearing, but I'm trying to find areas where you don't see a bunch of ads yeah. and you don't see You're a bunch of modern- the architecture yeah. and the, the yeah. city. Yeah, and things like that. So I tried to find areas where you would only see things that have been there for, oh, you know, a while. And it's funny, we'd be looking at these ancient Roman ruins and stuff, and uh, I'd look to the crowd, I'd look to the, art, the students, and I'd go, guys, you're looking at, at history. This stuff has been here for like 100 years. <laughs> and crickets. Dad jokes. All right, I do want to show you one more thing that we did that was pretty cool. All right, can mm -hmm. we look off my screen yep. for a second? I'm gonna, I want to. I have to look up something to show you something that we did that was honestly pretty cool. Oh, I, I might be able to show it to you in a spread. Do I have? Uh, so Dave, I was asking. Yeah, ask Do questions. you uh, normally recommend a different ball head for your for the platypod? Was there a reason you used the really right stuff one? The really right stuff happened to be attached to the to the tripod, tripod I took. took. Yeah. But yeah, I use the Oben. You know, the, if, yeah. I, if if I'm not taking a, a you know like a tripod, I'll use the Oben. The Oben's really nice. So you're so you're taking that's another thing. Uh, you're so you're taking the ball head off of your tripod and putting right. it on your platypod. So that way you're yes. only taking one ball head. That is that is correct though what you just yeah. said though. So if you're gonna take a tripod, you're probably gonna take your really right stuff because you're gonna take that for your tripod. Yeah. Yes. Uh, let me see if I can show you this. Give me one second. Sorry, I I mm -hmm. uh, just thought of something that we did. So when when I do these workshops, we. Mimo and I try to do things to really delight our, mm -hmm. you know, we want our class to have a ball. We do work them very hard. But one of the things that we did, let's see if I can get to it, was, it's a little further, a little further, hang on. I did buy everybody in the workshop an early entry ticket to the Vatican. So we got in the Vatican Museum an, uh, like an hour before the public gets let nice. in. And we went straight to the gift shop to shoot the stair, the stairway. And that was the main reason we wanted to get in. And we, some of us went to the Sistine Chapel. But I'll just let's see if I can find a better version here. Give me a second. Don't move. Don't breathe. Don't make a sound. Hang on. Here we go. So we, we hired an actress. She's a model slash actress. Mm -hmm. And we rented a classic old Vespa. Mm -hmm. And so, and Very cool. I actually brought the name of the people we rented it from. And so, and she was wonderful. She was so patient and she- So everybody on the workshop got to shoot Everybody in the that, workshop basically. got to shoot her in multiple locations. So I'll show you, we shot her there and then we came over here to this bridge and we did backlighting. And I was teaching basically how to shoot when you have a diffuser. So I brought a 10 stop diffuser, I mean a one stop diffuser with me. Mm -hmm. Then I talked about how to shoot when you don't have a diffuser and then how to find good light to shoot in and stuff. So we did a bunch, these are, these are just, you're seeing all the shots there. Then these are, I haven't picked a, a winner yet. These are just, but. Uh, what were you shooting with there? 
I'm shooting with that that uh, 24 to 105, I believe. Yeah. 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 The new 24 to 105. I wanted to show you one of the shots I kind of like. These were these were kind of nice. So we're trying to get that old Hollywood classic look, and probably make a nice black and white too. But anyway, she was wonderful. The class loved it, and I'm uh, just amazed you actually have the shots. I think that card only uh, that camera only has one memory card slot, right? I'm surprised I, you even got them. I know. I, I looked at the car, I think, and it had only one memory slot, and I almost just said, someone else take this. I, <laughs> I can't shoot with it. It only has one. People were teasing me about that on yeah. the workshop. They're like, really? Because I, 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 I would show them a shot, and they're like, wow, that looks great. How would you do that with only one card slot? Like, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, so there's that. We did that. that Very was a lot, cool. That was a lot of fun. And Very the, cool. The, the, uh, the crew loved it. Another thing that we did, ready for this, we got special permission and I don't recommend this. I'm going to tell you why. We got special permission to shoot in a very amazing library. So I'm going to show you the uh, one shot I got of it here. You can see it. Three-story library. Oh, very cool. And this is shot with a very wide-angle lens, right? Mimo says, I have your diffuser. <laughs> keep it, Mimo. <laughs> you need it. No, Mimo, you keep it. Please don't ship it to America. Yeah. I'll buy a new one. Uh, so anyway... So we got in this library, and it's called Biblioteca Angelica, and it's a very beautiful library. It has a very Harry Potter-esque look to it. And mm -hmm. this is the only picture that I, I finished. There's other in the series and all. But they allowed, they allowed our entire class to come in. That's very cool. Picture 14 photographers all standing there shooting. And at well, some point, the librarian came to us and just said, out. That's supposed to be a visual there. Let's, let's try that again. Yeah, there. Thank you. Out. She's like, that's enough. So we went there. So Andy says, out. Scott, you should plan a photo trip to Costa Rica. Lots of nature to shoot there. <laughs> I've, heard, I've heard great things about Costa Rica. Yeah. Now, if there's a lot of animals there, like, you know. A lot of nature. And stuff, a yeah. lot of humidity. A lot of humidity. Yes. So anyway, uh, so that was another thing we did. We got in there. They let us shoot for a while, but then they said, that's enough. I kill you now. All right. So, hey, here's one just real quick. This is uh, at the uh, right outside of St. Peter. So this was yesterday morning, literally yesterday morning. We go over there and we, um, we're, we're waiting to go into the Vatican and to get in, in mm -hmm. there first. The, I mean, sorry, in St. Peter's. And I told my class about this the other, the other day, and they started shooting it, and the light went off. Like, almost as soon as they started shooting it, the lights went off. So I, I was walking over to get in line, and I went, hey, that thing's lit. I'm with two, two guys from the workshop. Now, the workshop has ended. This is yesterday before me going to the airport. Like, I did this shoot. I went back to the hotel, grabbed my bags, and went to the airport. So anyway, I walk up there. There's a little platform there, Eric. I sat my platypod down. I took this one shot. The guy beside me at the same time sets his camera down, and boom, the lights went off. Oh, bummer. It was as if we believe. Now, we have no way to prove this, but we believe a nun is watching that fountain. And when she sees photographers start to shoot it, she runs over and hits the switch. Because none of the other lights in the entire place Either time, every, Ever all go the off. columns are lit, the, everything's lit, and there's got to be a nun just cracking up. All right, well, uh, we got to take a break. Actually, we really need to end the show. But we started late. No, no. we started late, right? We got one more segment. <laughs> okay, we do. We're going to take a break, and we're going to talk about dronage. Were we supposed to talk about dronage now? Yep. We're going to talk about dronage next. See ya. I lost track of time. <laughs> all together. Hey everybody, Scott Kelby here with Mr. Larry Becker. And I'm here because we have an awesome new class for you, all about travel photography, but not what you think. Right, it's about traveling right and making sure you have the things that you need, that you get where you gotta go, and we cover a whole bunch of stuff that'll really make your photo trips much, much better. Things like, which bag should you carry? If you go big, what do you add into the bag? Right, and if you go light and you're gonna be with your family, you don't wanna carry that much gear, what's the solution there? I'm gonna show you exactly how to pack it, what I do to make the most of these trips. And I also break down all the gear that I use. I'm gonna take you camera bodies, lenses, the whole nine yards, and a bunch of little accessories you're gonna to wanna to know about. At the end of the shoot, at the end of the day, what's your backup strategy? How do you protect your images when you get back to your hotel room at night? And then we're gonna talk about what you do when you get home with your images. The class is called The Photographer's Guide to Traveling Right. And it's exclusively on Kelby One. 
The biggest thing that I enjoy about headshot photography is probably dealing with faces. My kind of go-to setup uh, for headshots is definitely the clamshell. It's going to cast a really beautiful light onto your subject, and having the right gear to do that is incredibly important. True art behind capturing professional poses is creating visual lines to bring the viewer's eye up to the face of the person in the photograph. Natural retouching is a big proponent to doing corporate headshots. They're not expecting a lot of retouching. What they would like is to look like a well-rested version of themselves. And that can be done very easily by just keeping the retouching natural and not going overboard. Hey guys, Christy from Shark Pixel here. I want you to come check out my new latest class all about corporate headshots and corporate retouching only on kelbywine.com. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base. He just never finishes counting. That's the problem. He never counts. I mean, it's like he stops at three every time. You guys missed the best time. part of the show, which is Juan counting down. It's, he stops at three and he never every finishes. Every time. I don't know if he knows the next numbers. He just stops. Hey, shout out to my new shirt, EVH Gear TV. There it is. What? All right. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you one more picture real quick because I was leading up to this and I never showed it. So the guy in the middle is one of the students from the class, Willie. Awesome, awesome guy, just so much fun. This is a guy that's like, I'm retired and I'm just gonna have the best freaking time possible. <laughs> he sees these two women on the left sitting there and he runs over and he starts talking to them and he can talk to anybody. Willie can talk to anybody. He gets these women laughing and going, and then the model goes, wait, I want to get in on this. And she runs over and gets into the uh, That's funny. Into the shot. And I, I captured this picture of them all just, it was just, that's Willie that's right there. a great shot, too. Thank you. Great gestures. All right. So one of the things we wanted to talk about uh, was uh, the Dronos. Hey, I, did, I want to mention Photo Walk. Two weeks away? Yeah, Photo Walk. No, well, is like a week and a half. It's a week and a half. It's Saturday, October 6th. Yeah. Uh, we have Gotta over 800 up. published walks around the world, and Adobe is doing their own mobile photography walk as part of the Worldwide Photo Walk. They're one of our sponsors. If you're in uh, San Francisco, right? Yeah. In San, San Francisco, Francisco in Union Square, go sign up for it. They're going to do a mobile photography. So if And you no matter are, where you are, right there, you just go to the map, and you find a, you find your city. Yep. So there there is like... Almost what, 900, almost approaching. There's going to get to a thousand walks basically yep. all over the world. All over the world. So, type I mean, in there's your city, type it in. Like, type in Innsbruck. Type in Innsbruck. I N N S. Or, or, you know, something or, or else. something else. I N N S. <laughs> B R U C K. Hit search Mapo. It should say Mapo. Uh, and there's a walk right there. Look at that. I wonder whose walk that is. Click on that walk. Yeah, click, click on, that, on red, that walk. Click on that walk. Oh. Oh, it's my walk. Oh. There you go. So you can join me if you want to on the 6th. We'll walk around for two hours. We'll go to a bar, get hammered. I mean, <clears throat> we'll stop and have lunch someplace afterwards, right? I'll stop by the bar and get hammered. All right. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh. Just kidding. Anyway, but... Um, so just go to WorldwidePhotoWalk.com for all the details. Okay. Oh, look at Christopher said he just signed up. And speaking of Great. other things going on, uh, we have your Flashbook and Kelby One uh, membership. They saw that ad, ad for it. We're going a special right oh, now. Oh, yeah, yeah. So if you want to join Kelby One, you can get a copy of my book. It's called The Flashbook. And there's also classes on Flash and all kinds of stuff. So it only it's only on for like today, right? Didn't it? Uh, like it, it ends tomorrow. Tomorrow. It's if you go to KelbyOne.com forward slash uh, flash hyphen book and you get the deal flash hyphen book there you go no yep. sense in making it flash book no no the, the web department doesn't like that they like those hyphens for oh some yeah reason. hyphens are awesome yeah so go to kelby1.com slash flash hyphen, hyphen book, book and get that deal. or if you go on any social of ours it's on there it's on yeah. all of our social we're social like that Probably drones. On this Facebook page. Drones. I'm in. I'm, I'm, I mentioned the word drones during my workshop, mm -hmm. and immediately a Rome, a guy that lives in Rome, says you can't fly a drone anywhere in the city of Rome. Oh yeah, but this is becoming an epidemic, right? Yep. So I think that this is something that is uh, 
is um, we've experienced this, especially over the last year, that a lot of people aren't know they don't know that they're buying these drones. If you're doing it, and I'm not talking about people doing this commercially, you know, if you're doing it commercially and you have an FAA license, you're a different type of drone person. But if you're a person who's just going out and buying buying a drone, want to put it up in the air, there are so many restrictions anymore that it's almost to the point where you can't fly it anywhere you'd want to fly a drone. So we were out in national parks. What was the first thing we oh. walked? We drove through. We paid them the twenty-five dollars. What was the first thing? Like big, big sign: signs. no droning, no drones, no drones, no drones. No, it was just so everywhere. If you can think of a place that would be really amazing to fly your drone, it's almost a lock that you you cannot shoot there. In Venice, in Venice, no drones, no drones, except for want to hear something interesting? There's a no drone rule everywhere. Mm -hmm. Chinese guy pulls out his drone and takes it off. And we're like, <laughs> we're all, everybody. Goes, <gasps> Mimo goes over to the guy and says, because Mimo lives in Venice. Yeah. You know you can't fly drones anywhere in Venice. You know what he did? <laughs> yeah. And so Mimo shot him. I was shocked that we had to run, you know, and our gears going everywhere. It was a mess. Anyway. Oh, I'll tell you, I mean, this is like, it's becoming like. Um, a picture of it? So I was on a cruise last week. So we were on the cruise and you left the boat and went on to their private island. Right. The first thing was this. This is the first thing you saw when drones you got off the boat. are prohibited. No drones. I mean, it was, there wasn't even anything before this. It was the first thing you got <laughs> off the boat. Basically, don't use a drone anywhere here. We're gonna confiscate it. Right. So, I mean, it's just, it's getting to the point where uh, national parks. Well, uh, I went to Iceland last year. You had gone the year before. The year before, you and Terry flying drones everywhere. Oh, Terry all was that. dropping a drone everywhere. I go and take a, take a drone over there. Drone, no drone signs everywhere. Everywhere you, you go can't, now. You can't go anywhere. We saw now, in Hawaii, no now drones. Now, this is the other thing. Do people still fly their drones? Yes. But you it's can be in big, still big trouble. In all these places, it's illegal. I mean, it's basically yeah. a, in a national park in the U.S. In a national park now, it is illegal. Um, it carries a five thousand dollar fine. Uh, some national parks are now, if it, if any, if they catch you or anything, they ban you for life. I mean, it's just like it's it's getting re, it's getting to yeah. the point where it's like you cannot do it. Yeah, you can only fly the drone anymore in your yard. <laughs> yep, or on private land. Yeah. It comes down to private now, land. Now, it, it is somewhat different if you go ahead and get your license. Yes, now, it wait is. a minute. It's, you have to understand there's a difference between registering your drone and the FAA license. And the yeah. FAA license. Now, a guy on my workshop, really great guy, was telling me about he went and got his license. He had to study for like five solid days to pass yeah, the it's test. A, it's not easy. It's a challenging it's test. It's a very challenging test. He's a super test. smart guy, and he it's said a, it's, it was, it's quite a test. What is it? It's the... It's the FAA... Uh, part 107 test. Yeah, the Part 107 license is what you yeah. need. And you have to go to the... You can go to the FAA site right here. And but they've that got... that doesn't let you fly a drone in national parks or anything. Understand. No, no, no. That no. doesn't open the you door to... You still have to, to get approval yep. to fly it in the national parks. So you have to get approval. So that's what it comes down to, is if you're serious about drone photography or you're serious about drone videography... You have to be you're a commercial gonna have to drone... Get commercial licensed... And you got to go through the process to get approvals to shoot. Yep. Either that or you're going to be like the guy in Venice who, I don't care, I'm just going to do it. But you're also running the risk of you're doing something illegal. Yep. So. All right, we wanted to wrap up talking about giving our field report on the EOS-R, which is the Canon mm -hmm. mirrorless. Now, I was Eric and I were both out in Hawaii for the launch. Yep. Uh, at Canon's launch. We got to use it there, but we got it for like a day and a half to use there. And they had their setup things. You've had a chance to go take it out in the field and use mm -hmm. it. I used it for a solid week out in Rome. Yep. And uh, we thought we would share some of our thoughts with you. Sure, yeah. So um, my first thought is, I don't know how you feel. Actually, I think I, 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 think I do know how you feel. Um, I don't want to go back to my 5D Mark IV. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Because and, and, and when it, I, You know what it is? It's the screen. It's that darn screen. It's the screen. Can I tell you something? I, I cannot believe. Like, I've yeah. had, like, I had a Canon 70D. I've had other consumer ones with a, you know. But I just I just assumed if I'm, I'm going to use a professional-level camera, it, I'm not going to have that screen. 
Mm -hmm. And so this is the first screen that has the quality camera that I want, the features that I would expect in like a, it's Correct. not, a, yeah, it's that's not what, what it Canon is. would call a pro, a pro camera. It's what I'm calling a pro level. Like you're a serious photographer, you want a serious camera. You it's don't want producing to... results and giving you yeah. the features that you need. Yes. Producing the results and giving you the features. Yep. It has a full frame. So it has you can full frame, it's you mirrorless. Like the wide and you like wide angle and stuff like that. And then um, it has the features you need. Absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, so I'm back and my 5D Mark IV is sitting right in the next room over. <laughs> And I'm going to go to, uh, uh, you know, Austria for my, my I'm, I'm not taking the 5D Mark IV. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying bad things about the 5D Mark IV. It's a workhorse of a it's camera. It's a great camera. It's really great. But there were, there were some other things. Hold on. Wait a minute. There's more. Wait. My son is in the, is in the chat. Jordan Kilby says, what's up, my dudes? Hey, what's up, Jordan? <laughs> what's up, buddy? Roll Tide. There you go. University of Alabama. Yep. All right. So new anyway, doggo. He's got a new dog. He's yeah. got a new doggo. Yeah. Nominees this doggo. And so, and that caused us to get a doggo. Yeah. <laughs> that looks just it's like, like a spiral. It's a spiral. Anyway, so um, I'm, I'm out there shooting with it, and and I'm like, it. I have the adjustment, the uh, adjustment ring. So it has this, you know, control ring where you mm -hmm. can assign it. I assign mine to. Uh, Exposure, exposure compensation, compensation stuff. That's what I do. Expo but I float between exposure compensation Can I show you guys the video? The video has no audio, so I'm just going to talk over it. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm literally on my workshop, and Eric sends me a new feature. you got to try this. Because a lot of our workshop, because Mimo is there, Mimo is an absolute expert on long exposure. Mm -hmm. He is Mr. Long Exposure. And so we're all shooting long exposures like everywhere we go. We're shooting fountains and we're shooting skies and we're shooting all this stuff with long exposure, right? So, and, and the river and everything else and getting rid of people. I mean, we, you, once you start shooting long exposure, you're trying to shoot it. People would yes, be like, you just hey, we're like, shooting a oh, sandwich. Should we Long exposure. Hey, we did a food shoot too. There you we go. We brought in food and we went to a courtyard. Did you use long exposure? No, that was one time it. we did not. But anyway, <laughs> So uh, what was my point here? The point was that, you know, with long Thank exposure. You. So uh, I texted oh, you that you feature. You texted me with this thing. I'm going yeah. to show you a video. So I was on my vacation shooting. I didn't have a cable release. I figured something out. And I was like, wow. I mean, this is great. This is awesome. This, this is a game. It, it, it was it one of those things where you're like, I, that's just so cool. Now, theoretically, you're sp here it is for my video. Let me open it up. Yeah, the 5D Mark IV technically does this. Technically. But it doesn't have that screen. Yeah, so this articulated, let me get it set up here. It's still, it's still downloading. Give it a second. So what it is is this. When you want to go to bulb mode, normally you take a cable, cable release, release. You plug it into your camera, and you either sit there and hold it or you lock it. And then you have to place it someplace, you know, carefully, gently, not to move anything mm -hmm. for however you want to leave that open. Now, sometimes with a 10 time, 10 X, you know, 10 time, 10 stop, mm -hmm. 10 stop neutral density filter, which forces your shutter to stay open longer. It could be a six minute, a seven minute. So yeah. you're there. So this feature is this. You, you aim with the, you know, you, you have the articulating screen. You get the shot set up the way you want it. You tap the screen, it fires the shot. Just by touching the screen, it fires the shot and it puts you in bulb mode. And the screen that I'm gonna show you here, if it ever downloads, why is my wireless so slow? It's only halfway oh, no. downloaded, because if I- Well, the other thing that's cool about it is, um, not, so you, you could set it on self timer too. So that's what I did, I set it, it, I set it so for you, a two second two second, delay. and I would tap the screen. And it would go one, one two, two, boom. Boom and fire the shot. <laughs> and then but it goes to this screen. You, you're not using any cable release. I didn't use the cable release for the entire rest of the workshop. And all you the long know, exposures you showed were from that. Yes, you no longer need a cable release with this camera. And, and it shows you on screen. If you can just look on my screen, it's not the video is almost down. But you can see it says, touch the screen to stop your bulb shooting. And, and it, it counts. At, up. It counts. It's at 48 seconds at this point. We're shooting a fountain uh, in one of the squares, and it's just. And when you're done, you take your finger and you literally 
just touch you it. don't have to tap it you, you just, just touch, touch the it. screen and it doesn't move your camera it doesn't do anything i never saw any movement or anything so you just literally just touch it and it stops oh and it stops it so quick oh it's, it stops it the second you even get close to it it's like bang if you it's done on it, I'm sure if it you breathe oh the video is almost downloaded and it's not a very exciting video because it's just me going hey look and you'll see my finger come in and stop it and it takes the shot but i mean you don't have to use the cable release at all, and it still times it for you. Okay, here's the video. Let me click on it. Let's move this out of the way. Oh, here we go. And this is, here we go. So, look. Yeah, it just counts. It just counts down. And you're like, oh, I needed it to be a minute and, and 20 seconds And with the mirrorless, you can also focus, even though I have a 10 stop on there, you can still focus. You don't That's have to the do the whole, so cool. you don't have to take yeah. off the lens so cool. and all that stuff. And watch, when you're done, just <laughs> touch it. And there's your long and there's exposure. your shot right there done. So that's Crazy. it. Crazy, it's so, so cool. I love that, Eric. I was like, <laughs> I wrote back to Eric, "You're the man. This is great." And I used it the entire time. But it's it's a lot of little things like that. Yep. But that articulating screen, I never it's a thought screen. that would make a big such a big difference. But I'm but but look at the shot from the Vatican. Yeah. There were times where I was shooting in there where my camera is aiming straight up. It's completely straight up, but I can compose it by looking at the screen. I mean, that screen, I <laughs> fell in love. I, I hate to say this, and this is gonna freak some of you out, but by the third day, I had stopped looking through the viewfinder. I was just using the so, screen. So uh, when I, like, I came oh. back, I shot a rocket launch with it, and I actually did not use my viewfinder. I used the screen to shoot the rocket launch. It was the weirdest thing, but it was so cool because you got to track it with my gimbal head. You just got to track it and you're just looking there and you're just firing. It was so cool. So to sum up my field report, my, fo so cool. my photos look like they came out of a 5D Mark IV, mm -hmm. but with a bunch of features my 5D Mark IV doesn't have. Now, my 5D Mark IV does have, uh, does have the what you call it, um, at more frames per second. So if I needed more frames per second, it's a little faster yeah, than this one. It is. So there's, there, you, if you put little it spec by spec, there are some things. There's but, differences. Yeah. But I don't need, how often do I need click, 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 click? Very rarely. I don't shoot sports with it because it's not, it's not fast enough for sports, no. but it's not too slow for. Because you, you know, need a 1DX if you're shooting sports. Yeah, yeah. Or a 7D Mark II, either way. Yeah, or something. Uh, so Dalton, Dalton asked, what is the difference in setting the timer to two seconds and touching the screen or touching the shutter button? Well, it's because I can, com I can compose everything on that screen. I can focus on the screen and yes. fire on the screen. That's the and other thing. I'm not it focuses to get, when you touch. Wherever right. you touch, it focuses. Right, and I'm not having to get on the top of my tripod to see mm -hmm. if my tripod's on the ground. Like I would have it on the ground, and I would just tap it. I don't. It's just, and, and you can it's see the pressure too. Also, you need. big letters, big numbers on the screen, so you can stand up and see it. I mean, it's it's. It's so. You'd slick. have to try it once, so and you'd go, "Oh, this is way better than." But it's because so it's so light touch. You, know, you don't oh, have yeah. to look like a you shutter, you've got to you press, press it. it. You don't have this, to press you just it, touch. you just touch it like this. Because I have hit my shutter button and moved the camera, even on the platypod, yep. just, uh, oh, I moved it's, it a bit. It's neat. You it's try neat. it once, you it's, will. And it all goes down to, it's the screen. Yeah. It's the screen. It's the screen, it always comes back to the screen. And mm. there's just so many neat little things mm. that you will find. And the, the lens, mm -hmm. that 24 to 105, I threw that face again. Mm. Now, it wasn't me, but it was the photo blogographer, the photo blogographer. What is it, Chris? Uh, what's uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yes, Chris. Um, uh, yeah. Anyways, that guy. Yeah, that guy did a review of the new 1.250 millimeter, mm -hmm. and, and he said that body. W and he, he was he w he did not give it as glowing review as we did. Mm -mm. Chris did. Yeah. But he said that body with that lens, and he said it looks like a medium format. Yeah. He's like, with that 1.2 lens, he says, it looks like medium format. But there, there is something special about the combination of those lenses made for it, the new R mount lenses. And that body, oh, yeah. I'm telling you, there's, 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 there's something to it. I don't, I don't know what it is, but it's got a certain it's magic. It's got a certain magic. Anyway, I just hey, love, look it. It. I love got, it. We love got it. some great comments coming in. We got uh, Rye saying, 
this is one of my favorite shows. I look forward to it every week. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. And then much, Peter's Ryan. saying Scott Kelby is the best. Peter, that yes. can't be true. And then Jesse was saying, was hoping you would show that image, you know. Um, and then Brian's asking, when are you guys going to do a photo workshop cruise? Why, that's very interesting that you say that, Brian. I, I don't have a date yet. <laughs> But you just never know. You never know. You never know. Hmm. You don't ever know. Kelby One members might find out about that. Who knows? Yeah, Kelby One members could find out about that. So where could people, people like, I don't know, you, go to win one of these amazing platypods we've talked about today? Well, you could go <gasps> to... It's Ricardo. Hey, one of my students, Ricardo. Everyone hey. gets an Italiano name. Ricardo, so nice to have you here. You go to there, kelby1.com forward slash contest, and then it'll there you go. direct you there because that's much easier to go to kelby1.com forward slash contest yep. than members.kelby1.com. Tell us what you want to win. Your choices to win today are the Platypod Ultra. You can win that. If mm -hmm. you need the bigger Platypod, I just want to tell you, the Platypod Max is for you're going to be putting a 200 to 400 on there or a three it's for a very big lens yes. i routinely put my 70 to 200 on the ultra they also work for everything Remember but, this, but the a 70 uh, to 200 has a collar yeah. Yep. And it sits in the center, so it, yep. it, the, the, the weight is no problem on it. It's if you're going to put something really yeah. bulky. You want to use really the max bulky. for something really bulky. For everybody else, the ultra. It's ultra light. Okay. I do use the max because I nail it down in the ground. Yeah, because he's got rockets. a rocket launch. And he's, <laughs> he gets the concussion from the launch, and he yeah. nails it in and does all this weird stuff. For the rest of us that aren't shooting rockets exploding in front of us. That one. Ultra. We're also going to give away a $50 gift card to Lens Pro to go if you want to rent a cool lens. We're going to give a one hour one on one consultation with the fabulous Victoria Pavlov. So she is an amazing digital artist and Photoshop World instructor. And she teaches digital painting, but she'll teach you anything in Photoshop because she knows everything about Photoshop. And a copy of my book, now available everywhere. And by that, I mean some places. How do I do that in Lightroom Classic? Part two. Go tell us which one you want to win. And, or think tank or bag. The think tank bag. Don't forget the think tank bag. Think tank bag. You can just write think tank bag, camera bag, think tank, think tank, think tank. Well, I think we've come to the end. <laughs> yeah, once we start singing the think tank song, you think, think it's just I a think rap? we've come to the end. Well, on well, behalf of myself and Mr. Eric Kuna. Yep. 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 Christina on the moderation. Juan on the jib. Jason on the directing. Ron on the streaming. And Facebook, making the world a better place. We'll catch you guys next week. Right here. On the grid. Tell them, Eric. On the grid. There you go. With He's one said, memory card. Just one slot. Slot shaming. You know, that's all we have for this show. It's one a real memory thing. Card. We do the whole show on one, one memory, memory card. card. My mind is blown. Boom.